What's going on in America right now is very frightening to my kids. It's, it's very frightening to everybody to everybody in the immigrant community. Right now at 11 o'clock with ICE raids planned across the country this weekend. Protesters are taking to the streets, including right here in Portland, how they're showing their support for the immigrant community. And after that earthquake in Washington this morning, how to make sure you're prepared if one hits the Portland area. Plus the Gulf Coast bracing tonight for a big storm to make landfall. What's happening right now in New Orleans? The news at 11 starts now. This is KGW News at 11. First tonight, a show of support for undocumented immigrants. Oregonians spent the evening protesting what they call cruel and abusive treatment of asylum seekers detained at the U.S. border. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dan Haggerty. Tonight's rallies come ahead of the ICE raids planned at major cities this weekend. KGW's Mike Benner was at one of those protests tonight in downtown Portland. He joins us live there with the latest. Mike. Well, Dan, organizers of the vigil here at the now quiet Terry Shrunk Plaza expected about a thousand uh, people, but I can tell you well over a thousand people showed up. Uh, the vigil here, one of a handful uh, in the Portland metro area, countless across the globe. Needless to say, there are a lot of people deeply concerned about what's happening at our southern border. I'm the lady side. Late Friday night, thousands of anti-ICE demonstrators, disheartened by what's happening at the U.S. border, march across the Hawthorne Bridge to symbolize the peaceful crossing of borders. Uh, I just feel despair over what our country is doing to the people coming for asylum, and I feel like I need to add my voice to, to say, no, this is not, this is not right. I can't believe that we are doing this. We as a country, we as a country are doing this. That's not how... I want to be. I saw a great sign that said, make America kind again. Earlier in the night, the crowd gathered at Terry Shrunk Plaza to make demands. Among them, all children all must be returned to their families to immediately. Ice contracts in Oregon need to be terminated and ice should be abolished. We spoke to a woman who has three kids and is married to an immigrant. What's going on in America right now is very frightening to my kids. It's, it's very frightening to everybody to everybody in the immigrant community, um, to everybody who's, who's a Latinx person in this country, whether or not they, they were born here. The demonstration and vigils across the globe tonight come on the eve of anticipated ICE raids in some major cities across the country. The president saying that immigration laws have long been ignored and enforcement is necessary, but the crowds tonight disagree. Dan, back to you. All right, Mike, thank you. And you heard the, the ice raids that Mike spoke of there. They're not supposed to happen in Portland, but they are expected in other large cities across the country. I guess the closest to us would be San Francisco. Other cities include uh, L.A., Denver, Houston, Chicago. They expect them to happen in New York City as well. And the raids are expected to target thousands of undocumented families who the president says are living here illegally. He says those families have already been given deportation orders. It's not something I like doing. But people have come into our country illegally. We're focused on criminals. Uh, first I want to say thank so Democrats, though, they're saying these raids, they are a political ploy. That's what they're calling them, to appeal to the president's base. A House committee held a hearing about it today on the conditions at the border detention facilities. Democrats who have visited those places say that they are unsanitary. But both the president and vice president are saying those reports are exaggerated. Now, this week on Straight Talk, I spoke with the U.S. attorney for Oregon, Billy J. Williams, and we talked about immigration, how his awful office handles those issues, and how he mainly, according to him, pursues undocumented immigrants convicted of crimes. Now, here's what he said when I asked him about the possibility of ICE raids happening here. Should people be afraid of a roundup in the state of Oregon? Well, I think the reality is uh, we'll, we'll see how this develops. Uh, I don't know of any plan to have roundups here in the state of Oregon. Um, however, I, I also uh, uh, believe in uh, immigration laws that are on the books, passed by Congress, and, and uh, I'm not a fan of open borders. 
Now we talked about a lot during a half hour conversation. You can watch all of my talk with Mr. Williams there on everything from immigration to the Joint Terrorism Task Force and marijuana laws on Straight Talk. That's Sunday at 6.30 p.m. right here on KGW. Meantime, friends and family of a Cornelius mom are fighting against her deportation after she was detained by immigration officers in Hillsborough on Wednesday. Betsy Monro uh, Moreno has been in the country since she was just a year old and tonight she's in a detention center in Tacoma, Washington, awaiting for her day in court. Moreno's best friend spoke to us. She says that she was uh, once protected under the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. You probably know it as DACA, but that was revoked a couple of years ago after she got her second DUI and a warrant was put out for her arrest. ICE tells us the judge also ordered that she be removed from the country in 2017 when she didn't show up for an immigration hearing. You see the video from this McDonald's here. That's because that's where ICE agents caught up with her. They followed her to that McDonald's where she was with her daughter. She uh, gave them her Mexican passport, so they arrested her. It's the waiting game, and I just hope that she doesn't get, you know, if she does get deported to Mexico, she's been here since she was a little girl, since she was one years old, so she doesn't know anyone in Mexico. She doesn't have any family in Mexico. She doesn't know the area, so she would just, you know, does she just get dropped off? What happens? The nonprofit Pueblo Unido is sending an attorney to sit down with Moreno and some others. He's going to go to Tacoma next week. Now, her friends have also set this up. It's a GoFundMe to try and raise some money for those costly legal fees to fight deportation. Eastbound I-84 has opened back up. This is after being shut down for nearly nine hours today from I-5 to 33rd Avenue. Police were working with a person who was having a mental health crisis on an overpass. Now, officers say that he did come back down off the railing. He was taken to a hospital and is uh, getting a mental health evaluation done now. We want to give you a reminder, though, if you or anyone uh, that you know is struggling with thoughts of suicide, you can find help 24 hours a day. Call the number on your screen, 1-800-273-8255. That number again is 273-TALK. And this was just part of the big traffic mess for people trying to get home from work tonight. Farmington Road in Beaverton was closed through this afternoon after a fatal crash there this morning. A crash on Statford Road in West Lynn also killed a person. It knocked down a power pole as well and some power lines. And a fallen tree took down some power lines on Taylor's Ferry Road in southwest Portland, shutting that stretch down too. So if you were in traffic on your way home from work, it was one of those things. Thousands of people in Washington got a reminder early this morning of just how earthquake prone our region can actually be. Here's a little glimpse at what the shaking looked like in Seattle. The 4.6 magnitude quake hit near the town of Monroe. That's east of Everett. The shaking was felt though more than 100 miles away. And this comes as a team of scientists are installing seismometers in homes around that area. Eamon Moreno from our sister station in Seattle has a look for us. Well, this morning's quake was not on the Seattle fault, but it is an active fault that runs right through the core of the city. A few months ago, a team of Harvard researchers asked for homeowners who might allow them to install a monitor in their yard. They're hoping to find out more about this fault that could help them prepare for a major earthquake. Yeah, Somewhere right here would be good. In this Seattle yard, you might say they're digging for information, putting something special in the yard in 100 Seattle yards to be exact. This is a nodal seismometer, or we refer to them as nodes. We call them waveforms or signals. Hoping to shine a light on what's shaking around here. It can sense the waves hitting the shore nearby. It can sense cars driving by, all of these different things. It records them over time. That's cool. Yeah. It can like yeah. sense a car over there. Right. The project is called Seaquake a team of Harvard PhD students trying to learn more about the Seattle fault zone. We can basically look at the subsurface structure in the same way that in previous generations we needed big earthquake waves to look at. Do is stick this guy in. The project was already planned before this morning's quake. It's a little uneven. They had the text, welcome to Seattle, this is great. So. It's a good reminder of why their data is so important. Again, you can't predict when an earthquake will happen, but you can highlight and um, ascertain which tectonic features are active. So given that we know this, this has been active in the recent past, um, we want to try to better understand it. You line up this black line. This installation turned into a neighborhood science lesson. It's acquiring data. So we know that our node is good to go, which means we can bury it. Yep, so we go around the edges. Nobody in the Han family woke up for this morning shaking, but with this in the yard for the next month, you can bet they'll all be wondering just how much the ground is moving.
No, we didn't feel the quake. Nope, stop right through it. So it's gonna have to. Hopefully, hopefully that one's a little more sensitive in our yard. The best part of field work is interacting with whoever lives there, because the reason you care about it, or at least the reason I care about earthquakes, is because of the communities they affect. While this fault isn't exactly large, it could impact thousands of lives if there was a major earthquake here. At this point, researchers believe about 1,100 years ago there was a 7.0 magnitude earthquake on this fault line. In Seattle, Amy Marino, KGW News. A big question here, though, would you be prepared if a large earthquake hit our area and knocked out all the communication? And I'm talking everything, no cell phones even. Well, there are about 50 different sites across the city of Portland, from Hayden Island to Happy Valley, called Basic Earthquake Emergency Communication Nodes, or Beacon. Most of the parks and schools, uh, mostly that's what they are. And if cell phone towers go down, volunteers will be at those sites and they would be able to reach out to first responders by radio. The Beacon program is a great way to get and give information. Uh, but the first thing you want to do is reach out to the people around you. Talk to your neighbors, talk to your coworkers, talk to anyone around you who appears to need help. And if you want to look at all these emergency preparedness sites in Portland, you can see what the website looks like. We have a link to that on our website. Just go ahead and head to KGW.com. A big storm right now heading toward the Gulf Coast. Rain, wind, flooding already starting there. I've never seen it this high. It's uh, pretty impressive. We are checking in on New Orleans. Coming up. I'm Matt Safino on Doppler Radar. You can see Barry approaching Louisiana. It is still a strong tropical storm. I have the latest on that. Meanwhile, our coast is beautiful. we got a great sunset to share with you, and I'll let you know if you'll see any of these this weekend.